So a lot of the rescue groups like to put a martingale dog collar on the dog when they adopt it out. And these collars are expensive. Well, you can buy webbing, and the webbing we're going to use is a patterned polyester, and it's patterned on both sides, and it's one inch wide. When you buy hardware, you're also going to buy one inch hardware because the hardware is one inch on the inside, so it fits the one inch webbing. So the hardware we're gonna need are two rectangles, a D-ring, a slider, and then a smaller rectangular keeper. We'll also need scissors, a lighter, and pliers. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is measure out our webbing. And for a medium-sized collar, we're going to cut one piece that's 12 inches. So it's very easy to lay it out. So here's our 12 inch line. And we're simply gonna take a regular pair of scissors and cut it. Okay, now we're gonna cut out a piece of 24 inch. So I'm gonna go, and you probably can't see that, it's a little off frame. So I'm just gonna drag it right back in. This was my 24 inch mark. And once again, I'm gonna take the scissors and cut it. Okay, we're done with the webbing, so we'll put that aside. And we don't want the webbing to fray, so we're gonna take a lighter and we're gonna melt it. And while that's still warm, take a pair of needle nose pliers and squish the fibers together. The other side was already done. Actually, you know what? I'll do it again. Okay, now we'll do the long side. A little pinch, another one. Okay, now we have everything that we need to start sewing these together. So I'm going to move the camera over and we'll get going. This is Thelma. Thelma is a 1948 Singer, but you should be able to sew this with a home sewing machine other than Thelma. I am using a 69 weight nylon bonded thread. With a modern sewing machine, you might have to go a little bit lighter, but that, that should be okay too. Okay, so I think I'll leave that off. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna take our longer piece and we're gonna set it aside for a little bit, is take the shorter piece and take the two rectangles and we're gonna slide it on. Now we're going to fold this side, the bottom side up and the top side over the top. And we're gonna measure. We want it to be three inches of overlap. Okay, so you can use a gauge and you can set it at whatever measurement you want and then use that as a constant guide to measure. Okay, once we do that, I'm gonna slide it so it's even. Move these over. And what we want to do is a box stitch. So a box stitch kind of looks like two triangles, which I'll do a diagram. Okay, so I'm gonna put it here and lower my presser foot. Now I'm in reverse, and because this is an old machine, I also have this have to have this high or it doesn't work, or it's not as happy. Okay, so I'm gonna go backwards first and then I'm gonna go forward over the same stitches. And what that's called is backtracking. And you can even um, do the hand wheel for the last few stitches. It's really important not to go over the edge because then the stitch will be exposed on the edge and it'll make the collar weaker. 
Okay, so let's go forward. And now I'm going to lift the depressor foot with the needle down and I'm going to go this way. So I've sewn this way and now I'm going to come diagonally across. So I'm going to lower the presser foot. And now I'm going to come straight across. So you can see I've got one line of stitching here, one that goes across, and now I'm going to come straight. And now I'm going to go diagonal again and end up at my starting point. And clip my threads without clipping the webbing. So you can see I have basically a figure eight made with straight lines. So once we have one end stitched, we're going to take the D-ring and slide it on the inside. And because in reality, this is actually going to be this way when we finish sewing it, I'm going to bend it, but I don't need to flip it to do that. I just need to take it and bend it like this and pinch it. Okay, so with that pinched, I'm going to slide it under the presser foot and lower it, and that will hold it. Make sure that that's square. Put the machine in reverse. And go backwards. Okay, let's go forward, and I'm going to stitch over the same stitches. Lift the presser foot. Turn it. And we're going to come across diagonally, just like we did on the last one. Okay, I lift the presser foot with the needle down, spin it around, lower the presser foot, and then stitch straight across. Lift the presser foot, needle is in down position, spin it around, and we're going to go diagonally across to our starting position. So lower the presser foot and right across. Put the machine in reverse and stitch backwards on the same stitches. And that will tie it in. It's called back tacking. Okay, so once again, we're going to clip. The loose threads. And now what we want to do is turn it right side out. So now you can see why we bent it that way, because now it, it looks better in this direction. Okay, so that's our small loop. That's going to be the part where the rest of the collar connects to. So let's set this aside. And we're going to take our long section. And on this section, we're going to take the slider. And this is the part that makes the collar adjustable. We're going to put it in one loop and then back through the other loop. Okay, once we do that, we're going to put it under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and sew backwards. One more stitch there. One more there. Okay, now we're going to spin it around and we're going to come across diagonally. And if the buckle is close to the presser foot, press it down and slide it under. One of the nice things about the older machines is the presser feet are more narrow, so it does make it a little easier. Okay, we're going to lower the presser foot and then stitch straight across. 
I think I'm going to leave it right there. Okay, so once again, I'm going to push it down to get it under the presser foot so I can spin it around and then lower the presser foot and stitch back to my starting position and then go backwards. Okay. Once again, we're going to snip our threads. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to put it wrong side up. So, see how it goes around through the slider? And this is the wrong side because that's where it's flipped. Um, fold it over. This is the right side and that's the wrong side. So we're going to put the wrong side up and we're going to take the metal keeper and you can see there's a seam on one side and there isn't on the other. So we're going to put it so that the seam is on the bottom. And we're going to take the other end of the long strap and put it through the keeper and slide it all the way to the other end. Okay, now we're going to take our small loop and put one of the rectangles on each side. And on the right side one, we're going to take the unsewn end of the long piece and put it up through the rectangle on the right side. Bring it all the way across. We're going to put the unsewn end through the rectangular keeper and through both sides of the slider. Okay, so now what we have looks like this. So now we need to connect the unsewn end of the long piece to the remaining rectangle. So we want to come in through the top and fold it over. Okay. So once again, we're just going to put it under the presser foot, lower the presser foot. I need to get my part up there. And I'm going backwards. Now I'm going to go forward. Spin it around. And once again, we're going to go diagonally across. Oops, let's lower the presser foot. I don't like it when the threads get sewn in. I'll have to pull that out. Okay. So now I'm going to come straight across. Lift the presser foot, spin it around, and then sew back to my starting position. Go backwards. Up. And now once again we're going to snip our threads. Can I get those extra ones too because I don't like that. There. And now we have an adjustable martingale collar.